this is recording doesn't appear to be recording right now so just bear with me okay here we go yeah hey hey we are locked and loaded into the next exciting installment of the superhero training dealing with uh, health health let me just uh, send a little chat there make sure I'm coming through loud and clear for everyone yes wonderful okie dokie so yeah I'm gonna cut straight to the chase what is health really and truly what is health well health remember we were talking last week about sanity and 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 sanitization cleaning and 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 and, and sanity being sane <laughs> you know if I think I'm this physical body and the way this physical body uh, um, is functioning and the way it looks especially to people on the outside which is vanity and to my own ego consciousness which is vanity if I'm obsessed with that then I am insane that is not healthy that is not sane we're not into that kind of sanitization based on obsessing about the physical form and cleaning 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 to the point of obsession where we forget our true inner nature who we truly are this unlimited consciousness the love of life the light of life the spirit of life that's our true inner nature remember we are with success ultra now we're always putting presenting our stuff within the context of a world in utter transformation there's a complete metamorphosis going on of, of the human experience we're in this melting pot this boiling pot of, 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 of change right now and um, the reason why things are changing so much and, and why structures are, are falling down all, all over the place is because we've been overemphasizing our attachment to materialism Remember, the superhero is looking at having a look at the ego and understanding what the ego is in terms of a pattern, an archetypal template within the psyche that the spirit is flowing through, and 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 health is is surrendering and coming into that the, to the flow of that of that spiritual of that consciousness flowing from within us, and of course that's going to inspire us to make different choices in our life, which affect us spiritually emotionally psychologically and physically of course and that includes nutritional protocols uh, exercise or choices throughout every single um, strata of our existence but we need to maintain this perspective all the time we're into a broader deeper more enlightened more aware conscious orientation of our own psyche which allows us to experience sanity and, the, in the, and that equals inner peace <laughs> and joy and bliss you know we don't find that when we're obsessing about materialistic concerns and trying to um, change the, the, the way things are appearing on the screen of life from the, from the outside we, 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 we find the joy and the bliss, the lasting joy and the lasting bliss and the lasting peace through the inner internal experience. So it's really important that you, that you understand that because there's a big wave coming through our tribe right now of look at this body, look at my body, look at my muscles, look at my, my car that I'm driving around in, look at the, the horse that I'm riding around on but don't look at me so this is tactics to divert us whether it's consciously being played out by uh, the just ignorance just body consciousness just the ego in its in, in its unconscious um, trip or conscious strategies being applied to direct your attention away from the driver of the car you see what I'm saying 
what you want to be having a good look at in yourself and in me and in everyone around you is who's driving that bus and just because the bus might be an old jalopy you know so what I, I, I like driving old jalopies my, my bus is, is to over 20 years old and it's awesome it's got style it's got class it's got character it's got personality and it's fun you see never judge a book by its cover we're into depth we're into connecting with the real inside of us which is which is consciousness flowing bring that through the biology bring that through the biology and that's 98 percent of the job done there and then if you're bringing in you're the highest frequency energy through your cellular structure through your orientation of your DNA into divine natural awareness into communion with the whole spirit the holy spirit you're bringing that holistic power into your cellular structure through the illumination of your own consciousness and through the feeling of the relationship with divine love get into that love affair it's free it costs you absolutely nothing you don't have to add anything to who you already are you just have to surrender and and experience that yeah and and if you want to um, um, sculpt the 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 the, um, the car that that um, um, if you want to renovate your 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 old banger, if you want to do that, then go for it. Or if you want to polish your new hot rod, polish it. Go for it. But don't ignore ninety eight percent of the of the of the of the equation, and and just be polishing away and wondering why you're not feeling really genuinely feeling any better because what life's going to do is life's going to get someone to come driving into you your new hot rod and and, and and crunch the front end then and go and so and say well are you still happy or did all your happiness depend on the the, the way your your car was looking that's what's going to happen so we, we we don't want to invite those kind of lessons into our lives as superheroes we're choosing to to live in grace and get the magic carpet ride, you know, the up, up and away, the smooth, woo, yeah, the smooth trajectory of, 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 of ascension. But it requires going down into yourself, into the depths, and, and doing some cleansing in there, psychological cleansing, emotional cleansing, spiritual cleansing. And that's so simple, the foundation of that. And let's just have a little practice of that right now. Smile. Smile. The golden smile. Close your eyes. Look up within. Smile. The golden smile. Look up within. Breathe the golden love. Look up within to the light above. And if you can't see the light already, imagine there's a field of golden flowers and the golden light is shining on the golden flowers and just imagine the golden light and the golden flowers and breathe the golden air feel the golden feelings and smile the golden inner smile and breathe that deeply into your belly into your bowels into your womb Feel that? And that is health. That is health. What I was experiencing then was just this cascade of golden love flowing into my being, through my consciousness, going into every single cell instantaneously from the inside. From the inside. Getting new nourishment from the divine light. And, and feeling that experience and that experience tra translating to bliss and joy that was my honest experience there easy, effortless, instantaneous 
And so what happens is my, my brain then is going to start producing the chemicals that mirror that experience. And so all those chemicals are going to get sent to those cells. And those cells are going to change their receptors to receive those chemicals. And the more I do that, the more I experience that, the more I send those messengers out, those chemical messengers, and bathe those cells in those electromagnetic waves, the more those cells are going to change to absorb them, to receive them. And my biology is going to become a biology of bliss, a biology of, of peace, a biology of joy, a biology of love. And that's 99.9% .9 of the equation is there. And the other less than 1% is the physical concerns. And if you want the 100% experience of the full deal that's available to you, then get into this physical adjustment. He's fine-tuning the physical protocols through the nutritional strategies, through the exercise. Go for it. And I'm, I'm all about that. I'm on it all the time. I love it. I love it. I'm always experimenting with new leading-edge strategies coming in. But I'm not obsessing about it. I know where my foundation is. I've been a, you know, a very physically-oriented person all my life. And I've experienced, you know, peak experiences in those realms, athletically expressing in different forms of expression, and still do, but it's nothing, zero, compared to the bliss I'm experiencing when I surrender to the invisible within me, simply by looking up, smiling, breathing in gratitude and love, and seeing that light. And if I can't see that light, I imagine that light. Just imagine golden flowers bathed in the golden sun. It's that simple. Look up within, breathe, smile, and allow it to come into you. And have a love affair going with that experience. It's the best ever. There's nothing to compare to that. Nothing. <laughs> Zero. Everything else pales by comparison. And it's free and easy. And it's the most significant factor in the health equation. Understand this. No one else is talking about this in the in 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 the in the world of 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 um, raw foods and, and 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 health that I see. Hardly anyone is talking about this. This is a fringe conversation coming from a few quantum scientific neuroimmunologist, um, cellular biologist, fringe perspectives. But we're right in the guts of this tribe, right in the heart of it. And I'm saying, right in the center of the vortex of this tribe, this culture, that you want help, tap into the divine. Tap into the divine. Let the infinite ocean lap against the shores of your soul, which instantly it's coming from the inside of every single cell. It's not coming from the outside. It doesn't have to be delivered by some physical thing. You don't have to know about how to put um, um, physical things together to make this happen. This happens naturally from within. And you can experience it. <laughs> Easy. So that's, that's the big chunk of the health equation. And then we support that. Okay, now if your physical body is clogged and toxic and you're constipated and depressed and, 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 and confused and you're full of heavy metals and, 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 and parasites and all of this stuff, then, then that environment within you is creating an environment that is disharmonious with the consciousness that's coming in. And so there's going to be a collision of two very different energies and that is going to create friction within you so if you want the full experience of arriving of of embodying fully incarnating in the world in full human potential then attend to these physical biological concerns as well 
And so this is the subject that we're focusing on at the moment in the superhero training. Physical support strategies, biological support strategies to enhance the, the um, um, assimilation of consciousness, of high frequency consciousness through bliss states, through communion with the highest on high, dwelling in the secret place of the most high, which means up here, through the heart of gratitude and appreciation, looking up to the light above you and breathing that in with so much gratitude and appreciation deep down into your belly, that golden light, that golden love. And practice, 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 practice. Do it before you go to sleep and as soon as you wake up in the morning and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it over and over and over and over and over and over and it will give you more power. How you use that power is up to you. And that's defined by the degree of integrity and, uh, and, and commitment to this relationship, to this divine love and how much surrender you will demonstrate. Surrender completely, trust completely, allow it to completely transform you. That's the foundation of, of, of metamorphosis and transformation. Allow yourself to become more of it. And all of these strategies that I suggest are to support this experience. So, where did we get to when we were talking about physical health? Alkalization. Alkalization. Hydration. Mineralization. Oxygenation. Detoxification. Cleaning your body. Cleaning your guts out. Understanding that within the gastrointestinal tract there is layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of substances hindering internal transit. Substances hindering internal transit. Substances, S, hindering, H, internal, I, transit, T, S, H, I, T, in your gastrointestinal tract. All the way from here to the butthole. There are little layers of stuff in there that's accumulated from wrong and too much overeating, poor food combining, other than the best ever food choices, dead foods, cooked foods, complicated mixtures, um, synthetic foods, chemicals, toxins, uh, acid waste, mucus, um, microbes, bacteria, parasitic deposits. All of this is like a bed that creates a perfect environment for disease, degradation, decrepitation, um, the dying of the physiology, so the cells can't pass their goodies between each other, so that the consciousness that's vibing in every single cell, that's vibing in the space in the cells, is, is, is clogged and blocked by glug, by substance that builds up and builds up and builds up and builds up and has been building up all our lives. So we want to get in there, use nutritional strategies to cut through that stuff like a solvent. And this, the light of the divine uh, interface is the, um, is the ultimate solvent for the psychological, psycho-emotional and psycho-spiritual substances hindering internal transit. So all that shit in the soul all that sh emotional shit, the emotional stagnation, the, the stupid thoughts, the, the negative uh, vibrations, low frequency vibrational states that adhere to each other inside uh, the, 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 um, the, the cellular structure vibrationally, all that stuff gets dissolved by the light of your higher consciousness. Somebody just said, I'm finding up, doing it over and over makes me tired and bored. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. It's so important to be real in these days. If you're tired and bored with your relationship 
with the, your, your, your consciousness, then you need to shift your consciousness in a big way. And you need to take superhero action to do that. If you haven't done Sun Pop, get into Sun Pop. Get some psychological conditioning going. Understand that you know, being tired and bored basically for me equates to death. If I'm existing, if I'm tired and I'm bored, and then I'm, I'm, I'm part of the living dead, it's part of the normal waking state. Most people are tired and bored, the normal waking state. It's like a living hell. If I experience any of that, I'm going to um, immediately take action to shift out of that state. Okay, because I'm not interested in living in that state. What we need primarily is a vision. Using the imagination, having an active imagination, having a vision that is, that is exciting, that's inspiring. There's a quote uh, that comes from the Bible that says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So if my vision, my illumination, the vision, my dream, the future that I'm magnetizing towards me, if that doesn't turn me on and really make me feel alive, then I'm dying, I'm perishing. And that's what most people are doing. Most people that are plugging into the material world are, are looking at um, um, you know, such a hopeless vision, such a horrendous vision, such a toxic, violent, chaotic, discordant um, vision that it's, it, it basically equates to death and so they die. You know? But as superheroes what we have is this incredible vision of, of purpose, of enthusiasm whether it's a vision of a, a grand, the next grandest vision of yourself, how you're going to look physically, how you're going to project your physical uh, form onto the, onto the playing fields of life, how you're going to feel emotionally, how you're going to how you're going to think psychologically, how you're going to dream, how you're going to how you're going to visualize spiritually, what form is your consciousness going to take? You know, this is vision. This, if you're bored then your, you, your vision isn't alive. So you need to really activate your psyche with, with vision, with a vision that turns you on. And there's no limits on that vision. The limitations on that vision, the, the way we box that vision, the way we limit that vision, it's, it, 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 um, um, it, it's absolutely defined by us. You know, it's up to you to, to dissolve the boundaries of your inner psychological prison because in, to all, all of us, in one degree or another, in, are in some form of limiting box within our own psyches. And some people are in a tiny little concrete box that doesn't allow them any freedom at all. And we want to break out of that box. Liberation. I'll tell you a good story here. You want to hear of a real, true superhero? Who's, who's your the one of the most inspiring superheroes that you know or have ever heard of, a story of someone that really lived. Think about that one for a moment. Just think about that one for a moment. And I'll tell you a story of someone that I heard about last week. As a real life superhero in my life, I'm going to have him on the, on the show sooner or later before the, before the end of it. He's on the west side of the island, on the other side of the island right now. So he's... he's um, 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 his name's John Peck. Many, you might have heard me talking about him. He's, he's, he's one of the oldest surfers in the world. He's 65 years old. He was the first guy to ever win a professional surf contest. And he's fasted, lived on a lot, lived on um, grace for um, 86 days. He's, he didn't eat anything, didn't drink anything, and um, just lived on grace. He called, him, called himself a gracetarian. He's done extraordinary things, this guy in his life. Done them. Not dreamed about them, done them. Now he he told me that um, um, when he was being released from jail, I might have told you this story last week. When he was being rele released from jail, he was um, um, sent into a um, like a halfway house on the way back into society, and in there there was an old uh, Native American Indian who. Uh, smoking cigarettes one after another had a cigarette going in each hand taking a drag off each fag while he was stamping his feet going hum 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 like this and spirit wrapping in between drags and hum 
spirit wrapping and he gave John the download for five days and five nights when he was in this jail. Now this guy had been in the squat box underneath Alcatraz for 30 years in the squat box. That's a box where you couldn't lie down and you couldn't stand up. And the reason why they closed Alcatraz was because one day the chief stood up. He stood up and he, all the bars bent down. The whole thing just went like that. All the bars. And the chief stood up. And as soon as he stood up, he told the, the guards, God wants you to close Alcatraz. Period. So, the moral of the story is, the bars of your mind, of your psychological prison, of your psycho-spiritual prison, of your psycho-emotional prison, it's up to you to tap into the power that will dissolve those bars. And you have to do it. No one else is going to do it. And it's a blend of a spiritual alchemy, bringing in a spiritual power that you need to develop a relationship with and you need to get turned on about that relationship. It's the best thing there is. If you're not experiencing it as the best thing there is, it's because you haven't actually tapped into it yet. You're still thinking, of, you have an idea, or you're trying, or something. You need to practice more surrendering and letting go, like the superhero says, and, and get into love a love affair with that resource and magnetize it in there and get down on your knees literally or metaphorically literally or as a gesture in your own heart and soul and say I surrender to you I surrender to you and I believe in you remember love times faith equals grace you want the grace you gotta love it with a lot of faith I'm talking about faith that doesn't wobble around I'm talking about rock solid mountain faith you tap into that and you bring that in that spiritual power and you emotionalize that relationship with feelings love compassion we do that through forgiveness if we don't know what that is and that's what Sun Pop lets you do it lets you take that 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 um, power of forgiveness compassion into the roots of your ego this I I I I I I'm finding doing it over and over makes me tired and bored that's not your spiritual your spirit talking. That's not the superhero talking, that's the ego talking. We're over identified with who we are not. I am not Nick Good. I'm not this physical body. This is what this whole thing's all about. This whole subject of health, how it began today. If I think I'm this physical body, I, I yeah, I'm tired and bored with not eating or not uh, stimulating myself with food or not working out or not doing something. I'm not just gonna sit cross-legged and look up and breathe that's going to bore the shit out of me. Of course it is, because my physical body is addicted to stimulation and to, to movement and to doing, 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 doing. But my whole spirit, my Holy Spirit, is one with the divine, one with the love, one with the, the greatest love of all, the love, the real love, the only love, the real. And that's enlightenment. That's power. That's superheroic consciousness, that experience, not an idea, not a belief, the experience. And so if you haven't broken through your shell, your shell of understanding, of miscomprehension, the shell around your heart that you've created through your ignorance, through ignoring who you truly are, then you need to work from the inside and break that shell, dissolve that shell with your yearning, with your surrender with your superhero willpower, with commitment. Turn up the heat, turn up the heat to a, to a, to a deeper, more powerful, more real experience. Instead of a counterfeit version of an experience that makes you tired and bored. <laughs> Change your ways. Change your channels physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. And most of all, the way you orient yourself in your feeling nature towards the divine within you. Go deeper into yourself and get more commitment to it. Have, make more effort. Have more willpower, more tenacity. Turn up the heat. You've got to dissolve that prison. You're in the squat box in Alcatraz. If you're tired and bored, you're in an invisible 
prison. It's a psycho-spiritual prison. And we need to dissolve those bars. And you need to tap into the power that will let you dissolve those bars. But it's you who has to stand up. You have to stand up. Yeah, this is good stuff. This is the foundation of true health. This is the foundation of super health. And you can do this whether you're in a wheelchair, whether you haven't got any arms or legs. You may have heard of that guy, Nick Vujicic? Vujicic? No arms, no legs, no worries. That's his, that's his uh, um, mantra. And he's, he, he, what's he going to be doing? You know, he ain't going to be going to no bodybuilding contest. He's not bothered about the striations in his biceps. He's overwhelmingly full of joy. He's got the joy of God pouring out of him. And he goes all over the world ministering to thousands and thousands of people in their little boxes that have made all these excuses up why they're not happy, why they're tired, why they're bored. Because, and they've got arms and legs, but they haven't got this or they haven't got that and they haven't got, they want this and they want that. And all these excuses that make these bars in our prison. And he's going, hey, you don't need any of that stuff. You don't even need arms and legs to be happy all the time, all the time. So he's plugging into super health there, plugging into super health. We love that guy. He's such an inspiration. Okay? So practice, 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 practice leads to the best days ever, consistently and constantly. Surrendering, 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 surrendering to the infinite power. And then use your mind, use your imagination. Remember the superheroes activists. We're into visioning. We're into honing vision and visioning. We're into, in, into creating our realities, sculpting our realities, not being the victims of reality. We're activists. And so use your imagination. And remember that quote, where there is no vision, the people perish. So if you're, if you're not nurturing an inner vision, and, and I'm talking about sustaining that vision constantly, not just every now and again, once a week or something, and then just allowing yourself to gravitate to the, into, the, into the, 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 the vision of the status quo. Because when we're talking about these levels of collective consciousness, not on the physical realm, as soon as we move out of the physical into the mental, emotional, and spiritual, almost instantaneously we're into the collective consciousness, we're into the soup where we're all one. All of the energy and the vibrations of energy are bubbling in this soup. And it's an alchemical concoction that, that is being adjusted right now. And the forces of creation, the appearance of creation, astrological forces, cosmological forces, archetypal forces, spiritual forces, emotional forces, um, psychological forces, physical forces, everything is converging in that alchemy right now and creating, making that soup bubble a little more and boil a little more and bring in combinations of biochemicals and electrochemicals and magnetism together in there which vibrationally create uh, is what we tap into as, and what we call the status quo. It's the norm. It's the, if, we t if we melt it all down and we divide it by six billion people, it's the way the average individual is feeling. And as superheroes, we're not interested in feeling and thinking and speaking and visioning and behaving in the way that normal people do. We have zero interest in that. It's repulsive to us. It's anathema. What's the point of walking the road of the living dead? Zom we're not in the herd of zombies going towards the cemetery. We're in the tribe of superheroes that are rising. Even if we've been going in that flow, even if the whole train is run off the rails and going over the cliff and we're still chained to the seat, we are in the psychological vision of we're flying, we're flying. And, and, and it's, and it's going to be like that. If you're still in the train and it's running over the edge of the cliff, you're still stuck in your negativity, your emotional depression, your confusion, your physical toxicity, your doubts, your fears, your debts, your insecurities, and every single excuse that your ego can come up with to reinforce the bars of your prison, make sure that that single part of you, that spark that I'm talking to you now and that you're in touch with, and I know that you are, is holding the vision of ascension. No matter how far you're spiraling down, understand that the momentum of the fall, you can, you can 
flow out of that. You can use that downward momentum to go whoosh, up, up and away, any time you like, any time. Because there's no such thing as time and there's no finality. It will never, ever, ever end. So whether you're in the body or out the body, whether you're physically healthy or physically unhealthy, whether you're physically alive or physically dead, you will find your consciousness continues. And you are still going to be feeling and you're still going to be having an orientation of your awareness and it's still going to be your responsibility whether you're burning in the fires of hell, being tempted and, and, and wounded by monsters or ascending with angelic beings in realms of light. And you don't think these things are real? Then just do some research. Do some research and open your heart and soul to a deeper contemplation of the possibilities of infinity. Yeah? And you are, you're, st you're going to find you, it's still your responsibility to surrender and, 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 and recognize that you are witnessing an experience. That the experience that you're witnessing is not who you think you are. You're witnessing an experience. And you are the consciousness that is witnessing. And we all are. So the sooner we surrender into that with love, with gratitude, with appreciation, and we are experience that alchemy, we rise out of that soup magically. And we lift the whole soup up. And this is what living in grace is all about. And it percolates into the 3D, into the physical, into the material, as miracle consciousness. Miracles all around us. Miracles in our biology. Howard Wills, our great friend Howard Wills, flicks his fingers, restores the sight of the blind through the power of forgiveness, restores the hearing. He doesn't unblock their whole lymphatic system because their whole lymphatic system is clogged up with acidity and mucus and, and, and toxicity and rank from the way they've been living in their, in their ignorance for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. He doesn't do that. Biologically, they don't change at all, except suddenly they can hear. But before, they didn't, because their ears were so clogged up with all that shit. But where was that? Where was the substance of that <coughs> coming from? What's the reason? The reason's in a soul world, in a soul realm, in a, in a, in a, in a vibrational realm that he affects <coughs> with his will and the power of forgiveness applied through the power of prayer. Let's just contemplate on that with a few breaths for a moment. Hmm. Soft, gentle, deep breaths. Just settling into yourself, going deeper into your heart. There's nothing tiresome or boring about entering heart space. It's the most wonderfully liberating, vibrantly seductive and alluring experience there is. It's the greatest adventure into the wilderness of divinity within your own heart where there are no footsteps it's newness, explore it look for it be keen like a warrior as you move into that heart space with awareness and look up within and smile to the light and if you can't see the light just imagine a golden field of flowers shining in the sun breathe soft gentle deep breath say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You want to know what the best water is in the world? You ready? The living waters. <laughs> the living waters of the living God. The living stream of consciousness within you. The living waters. That's the best water in the world. <laughs> It's the most alkalizing. It's the most perfectly balanced. All you need to do is tap into it. Go and have a little sip off the nipple of the Divine Mother within you. 
just offer your heart like a little bird, like a little baby bird in your innocence and just suckle on the nipple of the Divine Mother and partake of that nourishment. Let those <clears throat> yeah. Let those waters come running through you. Howard Wills has had incredible experiences. Here we go, look. Howard Wills recently, while he was in Los Angeles, worked on me several times. I was having depression, anxiety, lots of worries, and now it is all gone. Amazing. Well, good on you for having the faith. According to your faith, so shall it be. Reinforce that experience. Reinforce that experience over and over and over and over and over. Go and minister to people with depression, anxiety and lots of worries. I was depressed and anxious with lots of worries, completely confused, lost, 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 lost. Except in the complete decimation of my ego and former, you know, what I considered my strengths, I found the real. It's good. This is mythologically and archetypically, this is called the descent into ashes and grief. When we go down into our darkness and we're broken, our egos are broken. And this is what death does to us. Death's a great teacher, a great friend. There's nothing to worry about. It's the, the best initiation. The, um, what's his name, that guy? God, I always forget his name. Kevin someone. I've got him on the website. Nothing better than death. His, his um, book's called, his whole thing. Nothing better than death. You should check that out. It's amazing stuff. Like so many uh, um, 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 near-death experiences. And it's just like, it's the best news ever. But what you understand very, very quickly when you research, and I've said this a bunch of times, you know, I've read 600 near-death experiences. And I've probably had, I don't know, five or six myself. And it is wonderful. It's wonderful. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Die before you die, then you don't have to. That's an old saying coming out of the immortal thing. Die before you die, then you don't have to. Die before you die. Die every day. Die every breath. It does you the world of good. Let's die right now together. You ready? Just imagine, just, ah, oh, all the care's gone, you know, nothing to worry about. You don't have to try and figure out what's the best food, what's the best water. No more bills to pay. No more emails to answer. No more telephone calls. You just floating, floating, floating. In the light, in the love. All the angels are there to minister you. You realize it's just an eternal experience. And it just goes on forever and ever and ever. And it's just a dream. And you're making it all up as you go along. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? Eh? Don't we just love dying? <laughs> but if you're terrified and clinging, the ego is terrified. The ego isn't a bad thing. It's not our enemy. We don't hate the ego. But it is completely body conscious. It thinks it's the physical body. It's, it completely feels as an individual and separate and alone. So it's clinging to its sense of self. Whatever it identifies with as I. I'm a personal trainer. I'm a, a, a success um, consultant. I'm a, a teacher. I'm a healer. I'm a surfer. I'm a great lover. I'm a raw foodist. I'm a bodybuilder. I'm a, I'm a whatever I am. I'm a mother. I'm a father. I'm a, I'm a milkman. <laughs> Ernie, the, the fastest milkman in the West. <laughs> the ego is clinging to identity. It wants to, it wants to, uh, uh, it wants to reinforce its sense of self, and it will do everything and anything to reinforce that sense of self. It's not into dying. It's not into surrendering. It doesn't want to die. Die means I don't exist anymore. We're into soul consciousness. The superhero is an immortalist. It's not why is it hanging on to one? It's like it's like wearing the same set of clothes forever. It's it's, like, it's just not going to happen. You, you're not going to wear the same set of clothes forever. No matter how much you like that suit or those jeans or that jacket or that t-shirt, you know, it's you're gonna you're gonna you know. It's going to wear out. 
or it's going to get dirty, you know, or you're going to grow out of it, or you're going to give it to someone, you know, it's like a, a big gift. Yeah, I love you. Here's my favorite pair of underpants. These are for you. <laughs> he goes nuts. It's crazy, insane. That means it's not healthy. And it's in disguise. It's, we've got the whole range of ego going here. We've got normal, you know, people that are respectful and they might go to church on a Sunday, you know. They, they, uh, they, they live by traditional values, Thanksgiving and all that, you know. A bit of turkey, let's have it. And, um, you know, mum's, grandma's apple pie and God bless America. Land of the free, home of the brave. You know, he might have supported the same football team for 30, 40 years. Traditionalists, traditional values. We're blowing all that off. We're surrendering that willingly. We that's how we take that to the to the into our ceremony, and we burn that. We offer that to the fire. There's no need to be attached to anything or anyone. In fact, it's the the more attached you are to anything and anyone the more un the unhealthier you are and we want to be nurturing relationships with ourselves with with each other with the outside world in a very beautiful sacred way which honors the highest in everyone and everything but we won't want to be attached to outcomes and 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 and, and, and nourishing ourselves from the reinforcement of a false sense of self during these relationships. We want to liberate ourselves from that and that's what gives us real health. And then the strategies that we support that with, well, let's just talk about fasting because the subject was prayer and the power of forgiveness which is essentially dissolving vibrations that have accumulated essentially through judgment in the family tree, in the family lineage and in the soul throughout space and time, not just by ourselves, but by our ancestors. That's all Howard's doing when he uses that prayer. He dissolves glue that keeps us stuck in, in a certain pattern inside the geometry of our soul. So the consciousness, you know, we've talked about this before, flowing through a pattern goes through a geometry. And that geometry is either harmonic sacred geometry or it's disharmonic ego geometry which is a mess it's like a I used to go fishing when I was a kid and one of the things I was always doing was getting my fishing line absolutely taffled up in a big knot birds like a bird's nest bird's nest suit we used to call it and sometimes we used to sit on the riverbank and we used to take two or three hours trying to get this line unraveled out of this thing and end up you know like in tears and having to cut it all off and go and get some more fishing line. What sort of a taffle do you think our psyche is in? Our neurology, our emotional body, our psychology, our souls. When we bring the divine light in through the power of forgiveness and how it is surrendered, he surrendered. So the experiences, the initiations that he's had and that he's chosen in his life have taken him to the most extreme acts of surrender, personal surrender in himself and death, shamanic death within himself. He's a shaman. So because he surrendered in that way and now he's a servant, his, the consciousness can flow, he can use that in service to other, with other people and he can affect, because we're all one, he can affect other people through the power of prayer and he can dissolve those tangle entanglements in your psyche. But what we're into is doing it ourselves. I don't want someone to fix my, my stuff for me. I'm fixing my stuff for me and I'm understanding how to do that as I'm doing that. And then I'm sharing with other people my experience to say, hey, this is the way I'm doing it and it's working for me. This is the way I'm sharing um, with people and incidentally you know a lot of you know I lived with Howard for a couple of months and um, hung out with him you know every day for a, a couple of years and still see him you know very regularly he, he lives um, a mile and a half up the road 
So I studied with Howard and hung with Howard and I know Howard really well. And Howard knows that he's not the healer. He's not doing anything. All he's doing is inviting the divine presence in and directing that through the power of prayer foundation which is forgiveness a core of compassion into the matrix the common matrix that we share where we're all one below this surface and hey presto magic appearing in your reality and then he's saying you know live this way pray this way <laughs> and support that way with nutritional protocols because they're obviously it's 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 a lot more fun if your biology is healthy and happy if you've got a hundred trillion cells or whatever there is communicating to your brain that I'm happy and we're in harmony and everything's sweet in in the in your universe rather than cloggage and and discordance and toxicity the accumulation of waste physical breakdown and all that stuff so prayer and fasting go very well together so your homework for this week is to practice Howard Wills's prayers, to carry on practicing hot up on up on up, the meditations, the heart and soul meditation, the five sense meditation, listening to the audio files um, from Brother Michael, and plan a little fasting, one day before we come back together next week in seven days. I'm going to invite you to fast for one day. Okay? Now then, let me qualify that. There's different levels of fasting, okay? The most important thing is that you need to pick a day where you can concentrate a lot on your connection with that grace. Where you orient yourself and focus on that without a lot of distractions, without a lot of stuff going on, without a lot of stuff to think about, without a lot of places to go and a lot of things to do, where you can focus on that, especially in nature, and breathe that and take that nourishment. And you might get one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, eight hours, twelve hours. You might get some good, solid time in there. And I guarantee you that that time is going to count massively in your life. That's an investment in your portfolio. Breathe the grace and pray. Pray for other people in the way that Howard suggests. Go to howardwills.com. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Put that combination of fasting and prayer together. Do one day. Okay? One day. That means start in the evening, start in the evening, so when the sun sets, don't eat any more food. Go through that evening, go through that night, go through the next day, all the way through that day, and then at that evening of that day you can break fast. And break it with some soup, some juices or something, or a smoothie, or something like that something really 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 nice and nourishing okay let me just just have a few breaths while super goji girls trying to get the whale in first gear take a few breaths Okay, so there's your fast, right? Now, that's a time factor. Now, how you, what you put in there is up to you. A dry fast, that means no water, no liquids, no food, is the most hardcore 
which I wouldn't recommend for beginners. Don't do a dry fast unless you've done a lot of fasting before. Have at least water going in through the 24 hours. At least water. You can have some juice. Juices. Okay? You can have some juice or and or juices during that fast and you will really enjoy it. It will do you the world of good. Green juices, vegetable juices, maybe over fruit juices. If you're in cold places, cold climate, then do something like miso soup or vegetable broth soup, warming stuff. Uh, you can have um, teas, herbal teas, just sip on herbal teas. But have no solid food, and if you really crack, have a little bit of fruit, or a spoonful of honey, or suck on a few chlorella tablets. If you're that kind of person that's, you know, needs to eat a lot of solid food and freaks out of the thought of not eating, then have some chlorella, or some spirulina or a spoonful of bee pollen, you know, stuff like that. But the main thing is orient yourself to the invisible and to the divine. Orient yourself to the grace and breathe that grace in. Consciously breathe it and take the time to be still and nourish yourself from that relationship. If you can be in nature, be in nature. Go for walks in nature, spend time in the forest, hug the trees, stretch, do yoga, meditation, lots of prayer, rest, sleep, take naps, curl up in little balls, have a massage, take a bath, nurture yourself, go in, go in, go in. It's all, it's all in the depth. You know, we've seen this, the latest version of, of, of the dynamics of reality, this toroidal shape where there's like two black holes and the energy from those black holes is spiraling into the center and the energy from the center of the experience is spiraling out into the black holes. So the infinite is pouring into creation, having an experience pouring out and reporting back its, its, its experiences go in. It's all within you. You're the next step, who you are becoming, is, is going to unfold from within you, beautifully and gracefully. And all you have to do is allow that, support that. It's a very beautiful thing. Fasting is going to help you do that. One day a week. I don't fast that, uh, hardly ever anymore. I shouldn't say hardly ever because I've done loads over the last um, two and a half years. I haven't fasted for a while, let me put it that way. I used to fast every once a day, no, excuse me, <laughs> yeah, once a day. <laughs> My record fasting is half an hour. I'm up to 30 minutes now. Now, I used to do one day a week. So every Monday was a water day. All we do was drink water on a Monday, and I promise you, it was. Once we got over the fear, it was the best day of the week. It was like, whoa, the feelings, the feelings, the feelings. It was just amazing. I did one day a week, three days a month on the full moon. So you fast the day before the full moon, the day of the full moon, and the day after the full moon. One day a week, three days a month. And that's a superhero program right there. If you do that, you fast in what you fast in 36 you fast in like 40 days a year you know um, 70 80 days a year you know that's 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 a lot that's an, that's over two months you know fasting each year one day a week three days a month and it's manageable you know but for the first year if you're into fasting you want to experiment you know developing your willpower uh, at, you know really connecting with that divine nourishment getting really locked solid in there stabilizing in that do one day a week for a year. Just do that. There's 52, there's 52 days right there and then. 
and then next year do three three uh, 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 days a month on the full moon and experiment on that one day with with the protocols that I suggest there. No solid food, if you're really cracked have a little fruit or a spoonful of bee pollen or a spoonful of honey or a spoonful of you know spirulina in some water or chlorella tablets you know little things like that otherwise stay away from um, 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 solids altogether it, and then if you need stuff go miso soup, vegetable broth, vegetable juices, green juices fruit juices diluted with water and if you don't need that water and teas that kind of thing yeah and if you don't need that then nothing just into the living on the light and the liquid light you know and people are living you know like Jasmaheen one of my friends Jasmaheen she's been on it for you know over 20 years there's I think she said last time there's like 300 um, um, individuals in the world right now that she knows of that live on light you know they just don't eat they just don't bother <clears throat> you know so it's up to you it's up to you you know how you structure it but do one day before we meet again and just have a go and don't beat yourself up if you can't do it if you crack you know at lunchtime oh I've got to have something to eat you know don't feel guilty or ashamed celebrate the fact that you've done four hours or six hours or ten hours or twelve hours you know what I mean be gentle with yourself it's not it's not about fasting, it's about connecting with the divine and being loving and gentle towards yourself. If we're addicted to anything, including food, then weaning ourselves off that addiction involves very often being so gentle and kind and understanding towards ourselves. So it's like, yeah, I'm, I've, uh, even though, remember the emotional freedom technique? Even though, even though, this is, this is the large intestine meridian here, even though I'm stuffing myself with, with chocolate and cheese and I should be fasting. <laughs> I deeply and completely love and accept myself just the way I am. Even though I'm stuffing my face with chocolate and cheese, I deeply and completely love and accept myself just the way I am. And mean it, mean it, mean it, mean it, mean it, mean it inside. Because all that matters is, do you really love yourself deeply and completely? Just like God loves you, just like life loves you. Just like... You're not a bad person. The superhero loves themselves deeply and completely, and the worst addicts, the ones that are you most most addicted, the most you know with the most attached egos, they're the ones that we love the most because they make the you know the, we let go of that. It's like a statue. It's like a you know just something that hangs on to us it's like we're poured into this mold and it's defined by its experiences and the the monsters that have come and gone Rawr! at it you know and you're not good enough you're not good enough I don't like you because you don't behave in this way and stuff like that and it makes that statue <gasps> paralyzed and so that little consciousness in there running around in a fear mold it's going to be, of course, it's going to be trying to get its, you know, little breaths of air wherever it can. You know, from its cheese and chocolate or chips or ice cream or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. We're all, we're all suffering from the same disease. I'll let you, I'll t tell you an, a, a nice little quote. Um, um, the, the disease of the soul, the disease of the soul is the illness of name and form okay that's what it is it's very very deep you know that's what we're dealing with it's like hang on a minute name and form Nick Good this is my physical body um the disease of the soul is because I think I'm this this is a deep subject we're talking about here so be gentle 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 take your time what about smoking <coughs> what about smoking Again, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, you know, in terms of like addiction, like if I'm smoking and, uh, you know, okay, right now I'm psyching myself up, I'm going to stop smoking on Monday. That's it. It's over. I don't like it. My wife doesn't like it. It stinks. It's like, yuck, it's not good for you. I'm over it on Monday. Okay, Monday comes. I'm smoking again. <laughs> Oi! Chuck off! It's getting rid of uh, one of our prize roosters. I think he's saying it's time. So um, he's uh, 
Yeah, I've, okay, I'm all psyched up for Monday, I'm not smoking anymore, yeah? So Monday comes around, I'm off the smoke on Monday, and then uh, Wednesday comes and I'm, I'm smoking again. But don't beat yourself up about it, you know? Get a couple of days and, and, and then have another go, you know? And But don't beat yourself up about it. The more you hate yourself, just love yourself, surrender to the love, forgive yourself, hot up, on up, on up. Please forgive me, I love you. Say, I'm sorry, please forgive me to your body, to your lungs. You know, deeply and completely accept yourself just the way I am. I'm smoking again, even though I don't want to smoke, even though I know smoking's not in my highest interest physically. Just let it, let it go. I deeply and completely love and accept myself just the way I am. And if you can, yeah, don't smoke in, while you're fasting. Have a day off. Have a pressure-free day off. You'll love it. Ah, oh. should we all do a little heart tone together? You all ready for a heart tone? Let's do three heart tones together, okay? So we're just going to drop into the heart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sacred. Make it sacred. Yeah, make it sacred. It's just the addictive, um, um, you know, the addiction when we're not doing things in a sacred way. Make it sacred. I used to love smoking. I was addicted to smoking. I started smoking when I was like eight or nine. Started smoking marijuana when I was 22, and I was addicted to that until, till, I don't know, I don't know when that that dropped off. But I used to love it. You know, it was like. But what you're addicted to is the sacred breath. You're addicted to the to the nipple. That understand that this the thing is you don't need the thing. What you need is the the association of the of the connection to the to the breath to something sacred. You don't need that thing. You don't need that smoke. You don't need that substance. You don't need those chemicals. You don't need that toxicity. Period. You do not need that. What you need is that sacred nourishment to get into that in a big way. Okay. Time for toning. T is for toning. So we're going to do three heart tones. So we're going to drop into our heart. We're going to take a nice big breath. And we're going to go, ah, together, okay? And we're going to do that three times. And we're going to hold a vision while we're doing that, all right? We're going to hold a vision while we're doing that. And we're going to hold a vision of ourselves doing one day fasting and feeling fantastic. The best we've ever felt. Yeah? Just so good. Just effortless. This is easy. I'm being nourished by grace. I'm being nourished by a higher form of nourishment in my life. And it just makes me feel so good. Okay? All right. Synchronize on an exhalation, breathing all the way out. Breathing all the way in, looking up, having the golden vision of your success in the fast. going. Settle.
Yeah, we can do a tone in. I'll do a tone in um, session at the end of this superhero training as a bonus. Yeah, yeah, we'll drop the whole toning thing in. Okay, you lovers, I'm gonna go for a surf. It's time to immerse myself in the big blue. So the whales are calling, and superheroes always answer the call. Sending you so much love and blessings. Power on, power on, power on with the homework. We are charging forward. Brother Michael's coming back real soon. He might be back for the next broadcast. I oh, know, I think he's going to miss it, but he could be. But otherwise, yeah. Hallelujah. Cock a doodle doo. They're singing hallelujah, those roosters. Victory is guaranteed. Victory is guaranteed. Victory is guaranteed. Understand that. It, the, it's already done. The job is done. The job is done. Victory is guaranteed. We have triumphed because we're born of the triumphant. It's up to us whether we tune into it or we forget all about it. What we give you is the power to make the choice. If you want to choose to connect, we give you the power, powerful tools to support you in that choice. Toning is one of the great ones okay so we're gonna have it all in this superhero training you know it's the best thing for you so much love and blessings don't worry about anything don't worry about anything okay see you next week aloha Peace and love all over the land.